Uh, good afternoon. So welcome and thank you for joining us today for class uh, 969. Um, our first one back in quite a while. So also welcome back. <laughs> Very exciting, yeah. <laughs> So whether it's your first, second, or 30th graduation, we always enjoy having um, people come here to celebrate all these teams that are coming together. Yeah. Um, this year is our 80th anniversary, and we have so much to celebrate. Um, we're here to celebrate um, some new breeder dogs and their custodians, one new canine buddy team, and two new guide dog teams, which is for very, very exciting. Um, I also want to take some time to say thank you, a big thank you to a bunch of people, our puppy raisers. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. We um, literally cannot fulfill our mission um, without you guys. Um, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and you put your heart and your soul into every one of these dogs. Um, and we look forward to hearing from some of you guys today, which is very exciting. I also want to say thank you to our donors. They are a big part of our program here. Thank you for helping. Yeah, thanks. Um, you help provide a lifetime of support for our alumni at no cost to them. Um, we don't receive any government funding here, um, so we are very thankful for the support. We really appreciate it. Um, also to our volunteers and employees, thank you so much for all you do for our mission. It really means a lot. <laughs> yeah. Whether you are working by helping, you know, working with our clients, to administration, to working in the kennels, we have some of our kennel techs here, um, or, you know, working with our clients, um, such as our instructional staff here, uh, myself, I'm Claire, and we have Emily, Allie, and Arlene in the crowd as well. So everyone here comes together. We've got our cooks as well. It's um, pretty amazing. So, and thank you to all our volunteers. We also couldn't do what we do without you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, so first, we will be talking about the breeding stock dogs that are joining our program. Very exciting. So we have um, Nicolaj, a male yellow Labrador retriever, raised by Lisa and Richard Lambie of Springville, California. And they're going to breeder custodians Mark and Victoria Harder of San Rafael, California. This is our granddaughter, Sophia. She also helped raise Oh, yeah. Thank you, Sophia. In fact, they graduated from high school together. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, that's neat. Would you like to say a few words? Oh, uh, sure. Um, I, I, sorry, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't do too well when I'm put on the spot, but um, I, I want to give a big thank you to Guide Dogs for the Blind. Um, you've been such an incredible organization to work with, and I feel really humbled to be a, a puppy raiser, and um, it's just been one of the most fruitful and fulfilling experiences throughout high school. Uh, and <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Um, and I really hope to continue my journey with guide dogs at Berkeley. I know that there's a wonderful uh, puppy raising club out there. So I hope to get involved with them as well. So thank you so much for all that you do. You're a wonderful organization. Um, I just want to add that um, Sophia, this is her third puppy she raised and first graduation. Uh, because of COVID. So we did some Zoom graduations. It's just not quite the same. So we are thrilled that she's getting this full experience this time. Yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. <laughs> then next we have um, another male yellow Labrador retriever named Kodiak. Um, he was raised by Kimberly Heyer and Tiffany Heyer of Merced, California, and he will be going to breeder custodians Heather and Tony, Tony DiGiorno. Um, would you guys like to say any words? Yay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> they got to say hi. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank 
Well, first we'd like to thank God Dogs also. Um, he is number 12 that we've raised. He's the first breeder that we've been able to do, so it, this is pretty exciting. Um, the last one that we did was a, a COVID puppy, and he was dropped, and the Dogs for Diabetics picked him up, so we went to his graduation last weekend. So that was, we're, we're two for two for after COVID. Um, but it's, it's really been a lot of fun. It's like, like it says, <laughs> he's a goober. Um, <laughs> like we said with all the dogs, it does take a village to raise the dogs. And we have wonderful support at, our, at my 4-H club. Uh, Lancers 4-H has helped me every time I take a puppy in. Every kid in the group wants to hold him. Our puppy raising group in Merced, all of our leaders, our CFRs, everybody's helped us so much. So we really appreciate everything that they've done. And we're super excited that Heather and the girls and uh, her husband get Kodiak, that he is going to be such a fun addition to their family. And they're going to have so much fun with him, <laughs> aren't you girls? <laughs> Um, as you can see, Kodiak's kind of a large dog. Um, he's probably the biggest, he is the biggest we have ever had. Um, and he was a little challenging at the beginning, but I think he's fallen into what he's supposed to be doing. And with the family, the girls are all over him. And that is just what he needs and what he wants all the time. So um, we are excited for him and look forward to seeing his puppies as they start to come out. Congratulations to both those new breeding dogs. Very excited. Next, we're going to have the Canine Buddy program come up. We have a new team. Kelsey Gilbert will be coming up and um, announcing that. Thank you, Claire. I just wanted to give a, a brief little update about the Canine Buddy program because we've had some pretty exciting um, changes and expansion to our program. So just to fill you all in, um, we've recently expanded to serve clients ages five and above. So it started as a youth program, but now we are also serving adults, and we are across the entire United States now. So that's another exciting development. Ultimately, we'll be expanding into Canada as well to serve kind of the same geographic region as we do for our guide dog program. Another change is the Canine Buddy clients are also going to have access to a similar level of service to our guide dog clients, which would include veterinary financial assistance program and follow-up services. And the Canine Buddy dogs are not service dogs, but they're just wonderful companions that bring joy and confidence and a connection to our GDB community. I think that's why we're all here today, right? This is such a special community between our volunteers and our donors, um, our raisers, our staff, um, our clients. So it's a really special thing to be a part of. And we're just so excited to have the ability to reach more people and to be more inclusive with the clients that we serve. So we have one of those uh, teams that is uh, being recognized today. And so I'm gonna invite uh, Myra to come up here with uh, Aberforth and Aberforth Razor. So Myra Carey of uh, Concord, California is receiving Aberforth a male yellow Labrador Golden Retriever cross, and he was raised by Vidiana Flores of Davis, California, Carolyn Patton of Davis, California, Karen Lindstrom and Lauren Reeves of Ripon, California. And Myra received her first guide from GDB in 1967 and has worked five guides since then, so she's no stranger to our community. She's not a new addition, but we're welcoming her back in a new way. And after hearing about the expansion of the Canine Buddy program, Myra was thrilled to apply and to be a part of it and connect with us in, uh, in this capacity. In her free time, Myra likes to do crafts, she goes to church, and she's enjoyed doing no numerous speaking engagements for GDB uh, to represent the Guide Dog program. I'm honored to be here, and i just like to say it's really neat to be a, a part of uh, both worlds as, as a guide dog handler and now um, the, um, for, for the, uh, through the buddy program. And um, I just was so amazed when uh, Kelsey brought uh, Avery to me. He's, a very, he's so patient. 
He, uh, no, of course, you know, they've trained him with his obedience, the puppy raisers, and all of them. They have done a great job, and guide dogs as well. And um, because, you know, I know that this is something that as, uh, if, as a buddy, um, uh, buddy, let's see, as a dog owner or whatever to the buddy program, <laughs> um, you know, it's important that I keep up with his obedience and um, that he, I keep him under control so that, um, because he is representing, even though he's not a guide dog, he is representing guide dogs, uh, you know, and they do a great job. And I'd like to say personally, thank you to the, all puppy raisers, thank you to guide dogs, and thank you to the, the ones that donate because, uh, you know, it wouldn't happen without all of you. And thank you so much. I wasn't anticipating talking today, but um, this has been a very meaningful experience for me, obviously. Very life affirming. And I am very honored to have raised a dog and have them in the in the program, and then now to meet the person who is the recipient. I, I want to give a shout out to v, VD Flores. I co-raised with VD. Uh, we were both up at UC Davis. She was a student. I'm a professor. We split the time. She absolutely kept me on track. This is a wonderful dog, but it was a fantastic experience to, I think, have him experience all of the world, both from the uh, he would ride the bus to school with her. He would drive in a car with me. You know, both, both contrasts of everything that, that I think he is going to need to do to be a, a well-functioning dog in the world. Um, I also want to give a shout-out to Davis Puppy Raisers Art Club. It's a fantastic club. The, the expression of, you know, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. These are amazing people that if you need anything within a half an hour, there's somebody who is there to help and support us. I think they're a fantastic re reflection of the larger organization, which it's, it's really an honor to be part of. But um, mostly thank you, and good luck. You're getting a wonderful dog. Yes, that's great. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to pass it to Ali to present the class. Hello, I'm here to present the guide dog class. Our first graduate today is Lynn Mason Courtney. Lynn resides in Bethel, Maine. Lynn is a retired social worker. She enjoys gardening, cooking, and antique shopping. Lynn is currently a volunteer counselor for elderly who are visually impaired. Lynn is receiving her fifth guide dog, Ace, a male yellow Labrador retriever raised by Brooklyn, Jennifer, and Tom Davis of San Bernardino, California, and Helen Sumi of Rancho Palos Verdes, California. It's going to be in your right hand. I'm so honored to see so many people here. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I knew I had to say something, which of course I do a lot of, so um, a lot of talking. And I thought about graduation and what was really significant to me. And the thing that stood out the most was that the first graduation, the first public one after COVID, is for two women, which is yes. <laughs> One of them is young and beautiful and eager and very well connected to the world. The other one is sort of old and faded, but full of energy <laughs> and has miles to go before she sleeps. But I think that it's, it's really significant that both of us, young Kat and old Lynn, have received from all of you, from puppy raisers all the way up to our wonderful trainers, to our RAs, everyone who's part of the family here, have given us such hope and such courage to keep moving on. It's the kind of thing that is inexpressible 
but it is hope, and it is courage, and it's like, yes, we can do it. So thank you is not enough for all of you, including the donors, the kitchen staff, the wonderful puppy raisers, but I will still say a thank you. I also, because I'm not going to talk forever, although I probably could do that, <laughs> um, I also want to acknowledge my wonderful trainer, uh, who is a really awesome young woman. I hate to leave her. I would love to live here and be her friend, or be her grand. I could be her grandmother, actually. I hadn't thought about it in those terms until this morning. But she's the only person I have ever known, male or female, who is always right and I never minded. <laughs> we have a lot in common, like we like milk chocolate and we don't like pie, um, and a whole bunch of other things. And I will also tell you, she is an awesome parallel parker. <laughs> to Helen, whom I'm just getting to know, who is very special, I want to say thank you. And to Brooklyn, whom I'm not, not going to see, but will be in touch with. And to two other people who are here who are incredibly special. And this is where it gets teary. Cynthia Money and Karen, who co-raised my fourth. And after eight and a half years, he's back here with Cynthia. And I can never, ever say thank you. When I was at the airport at baggage and I had him bringing him from Maine, he saw her before I think she saw him, and I was chopped liver. <laughs> you know, it was unbelievable. So thank you all, Helen and Cynthia and all of you and the wonderful work that you do raising these super dogs and being family, because you all are family, every single one of you, and you're all awesome. And I will be back. <laughs>Yeah, it's just been a pleasure and an honor to be part of Team ACE. You know, I wasn't the only person that was involved in this raising, and I'm sorry that Brooklyn couldn't be here. She would have really wanted yeah. to just. And uh, this graduation is actually extra special. There's so many twists and turns and connections you can't even see or explain, but Nicolaj is my grand dog, grandbaby, so I'm good to see um, one of my, him, and he's actually, I think, a nicer dog, <laughs> and he, much, he can be in the show ring, he's so gorgeous, anyway, but Ace is actually a very special dog, when I uh, was out raising him in public, I would get stopped all the time. I would have to add maybe an hour, hour and a half extra for the amount of times I get stopped, how many cards I had to pass out, could I adopt this dog. Even in our puppy club, there was at least two or three people who seriously, seriously wanted to adopt him when he failed, hoping he failed. So, and, you know, so he is such a special dog, and to see his journey twist and turn, there was a, a reason for all these weird quirks and delays, because it ended up with you for some reason, and it needed all those funny bends and turns, and, he, and I'm so glad that Let's he... see how special he is when he hits snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll manage. He, he he'll will be manage. up for the yes, challenge. He yes. He's awesome. Yeah, I'm just glad to be part of this day. And it was be nice meeting you and to see... Oh, you're yes. wonderful. Yeah. Yes, Thank you. you are. <laughs> You can go up on me. Go find my seat. Oh, oh, oh good boy. <laughs> this is why he found my seat. <laughs> right here in the big bag. Okay, baby. Down.
Our next graduate is Catherine Neithercutt. Catherine resides in Davis, California. She is a writer and enjoys cooking, archery, and hiking. She also builds aquariums and terrariums. Catherine is receiving her first guide dog, Han, a male yellow Labrador Golden Retriever cross, raised by Jane and Lauren Andrew of El Dorado, California. I'm not even going to try to compete with Lynn's speech because <laughs> it was just awesome. So I'm just going to say thank you to everybody who made this experience just amazing. Um, I had a really great time. Excuse me. Can you hold that? Sit. Good boy. Sit. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry. Thank you so much to everybody um, involved in, in making Han a successful guide dog, um, training him. Um, working with him and for allowing me the opportunity to be, to have him in my life. So thank you all so much. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna say because he is not behaving. <laughs> I will also keep this short and sweet because I'm not a public speaker, but um, I just wanna say um, thank you to Cameron Park Guide Dog Puppy Raisers for um, being part of the village to raise this beautiful dog, and my husband Gary and my daughter Lauren, who actually is a co-raiser. He was our uh, COVID puppy, um, Lauren. We had another puppy at the same time, a black lab named Cecilia, and uh, you know it was COVID, and so we, she, we had her for a lot longer than we planned on, but Lauren convinced me we should start raising another puppy. So we got Han at the same time, they overlapped for six months. And um, that was a great experience because, you know, as you know, if you're a puppy raiser, having an older dog to kind of puppy sit your baby puppy <laughs> makes it a lot easier. Um, those little sharp puppy teeth have to go somewhere. And it's nice to have them go into another dog instead of your hands. But um, Han was a really, really f special dog to raise. I think he was probably the easiest puppy we've ever raised. And he is um, number 10 for us. Um, and, or for me, actually, number six for Lauren. I raised four back when I was in high school. Um, in junior high. But anyway, um, one thing about Han I was thinking about this morning when I was getting ready to come and I got up really early is that Han, he's such a mellow, calm dog that he just wanted to sleep in all the time. And I don't know any other puppy that I've had where I would get up in the morning and the puppy would stay sleeping in their bed, just waiting and watching me get ready until he's like finally ready to get out of his bed and have his breakfast. But um, I thought that was kind of special about him that he's just so mellow he would do that. Um, he's a beautiful dog. We got lots of comments about his ears usually when we had him out because he's kind of got this, um, he had a nickname in our club, Surfer Dude, because of his crazy <laughs> hair and his ears. So, um, yeah, so I think he's, he's made a great match here with Kat, and they're going to be a beautiful partnership. So thank you to Guide Dogs. Thank you, everybody. Um, next, we are going to demonstrate um, a training method that we call back chaining. Um, Arlene and our guide dog Wave will be our demos today. During formal training, our dogs learn most of the skills involved with guide work via clicker training. Their training entails communicating to the dog using a click to let the dog know that the behavior they are doing is correct. The clicker makes communication much more consistent and timelier than praise or food alone. And today we're gonna to be demonstrating Wave finding the chair for Arlene. First, we start off by bearing, pairing the food with the sound of the click, like Arlene is doing currently. She is now starting to have Wave target her hand. Um, this is called a hand target. And this has been helping because whenever the dog touches Arlene's hand, Arlene clicks to let Wave know Yep, that's what she wants, and Wave gets a food reward. Arlene is now using her hand to show Wave that the chair is the new target. 
And so to get Wave to find the chair, we're using a method called backchaining, where we start at the end goal, the chair, and slowly, link by link, increase the complexity and distance of the scale. So now Arlene is starting to give some distance because Wave is showing interest in the chair, and we're going to see if she'll come right back up. She does. <laughs> And so we continue this just a couple of times to make sure that Wave is accurately targeting. And she's actually starting to bring Arlene up to it and showing initiative. So the next step is now Arlene is going to start working Wave from a shorter distance by picking up the harness handle. And she found the chair. <laughs> and as you can tell, Arlene gives a lot of verbal praise, which Wave enjoys. So it even makes the process even more fun for Wave. Oh, there we go. That's. <laughs> So right there, Wave showed nice initiative, pulling Arlene, and now Arlene can start pairing a word to it. So Arlene will say, go find the chair. And so the final goal is for Wave to find the chair from a distance and bring Arlene up to it. So Arlene's backing up, creating a distance. She's got it. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to do it one more time just to make sure she has that behavior down. Even more distance this time. She's got it. And then Arlene's just going to sit down in that chair to show, yep, you found the chair. Let's hang out here for a second. And there we go. That's how we teach our dogs how to find chairs using the clicker. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so happy to see all these faces for our first in-person graduation since COVID. Um, if you're interested in volunteering, joining our staff, making a donation, or know anyone who would benefit from our services, please speak to any staff members who are here today or visit our website at guidedogs.com. On December 4th, we will be having our virtual holiday celebration, and there's more information on this if you would like to join on our website. The gift shop is open today until 3 p.m. And we will be having some light refreshments in our lobby, which will be to our left. Um, and for the viewers at home, thank you so much. And we hope to see everyone soon. Thank you.